Today, we're going to be talking and listening to Natalie and to her mother, Melanie, which is going to be a fun experience in hearing the story of a mother and a daughter because Natalie is blind. So yeah, hi, my name is Natalie Kepa from New Zealand. I'm currently living and studying in Reading, California. And well, I mean, for those of you who don't know me, I am a singer, songwriter and a voice actress. What kind of music do you do? It's kind of like R&B slash pop slash like inspirational ballad and how would you describe your mom my mom is a queen she's amazing she's so resilient she's powerful she's passionate i want to do a plug for my mom's early childhood center i love what she's done with it actually designed it in a way that is very aware of people with special needs whether it's blindness whether it's you know sensory things you know she's done so much because of the experiences that we've had she's learned so much and she's actually Mm. implementing that in life Mm. and in you know raising and bringing up the kids that she gets to to come alongside so like I Mm. I just I love that and so passionate about what she does I'm very 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 blessed to have her in my life welcome Melanie good to have you on here what would you say about Natalie she's become almost like a best friend as well as a daughter she's a beautiful person inside and out Um, she has taught me so much she doesn't see any prejudice she doesn't see nastiness in people as she once said to me mum I could be sitting next to the ugliest smelliest (laughs) dirtiest person in the world and I wouldn't know because I can't see and I can't smell but as long as they're good to me and they're kind to me that's all that matters Mm -hmm. as we were talking um, just before we started the recording you shared a little bit about how it was a surprise and a completely new adventure in being a first-time mom when Natalie was born. What was it like to discover that Natalie is indeed blind and has some different Um, needs in life? Yeah, I mean, as I said before, when you plan to have a baby, you have an image in your mind of what it's going to be like when you get handed your baby and what that journey and adventure is going to be like raising a child. So it was like packing a suitcase ready to go to Hawaii and when Natalie was born that's exactly what it was like I I was in Hawaii Um, and then 10 weeks later uh, when I got told she was severely visually impaired it was like I just all of a sudden ended up in Alaska so you know the clothes that I'd packed for Hawaii (laughs) which were nice and cool and summery and you know imagine life outside all of a sudden I was you know in in a cold country and it was you know freezing outside and and I didn't I wasn't prepared with the with the items that I'd bought sort of thing I didn't expect it at all when Natalie passed her six-week checkup mm-hmm. with flying <laughs> colors no one told me she couldn't that she had a vision impairment <laughs> and then when she was diagnosed we had just arrived in New Zealand we've been in New Zealand two days it was my first time to New Zealand I knew nobody so you know other than my mm. husband Natalie's dad and um, I had met his mum and his father, who at that stage, unfortunately, was was terminally ill, which mm-hmm. is why we'd come to New Zealand when we did. He was the first person to hold her and say, I don't think she's looking at me. And we were like, of course she's looking at you. Mm. Um, and because he was doped up on morphine at that stage, because he was really in a lot of pain and had been hospitalised, we were like, oh, it's just the, the drugs talking. Mm. But then when we got home, Natalie's dad looked, you know, mum said, she got a bit of a lazy eye and we were like, no, why is everyone now talking about this baby of ours? And <laughs> mm. two days later, we went to the doc because we arrived on a Friday. Two days later, we went up to the doctor on the Monday morning. Um, we didn't, again, think much of it. Richard went off to work mm. on that Monday morning with his uncle and his auntie took me to the doctor. And the doctor shone a torch in her eyes and said, I don't think she can see very much. And I was like, what? And sent her to an ophthalmologist and I said, well, she's just woken up because I'd literally just got out of bed. So I still didn't really think much of it. And it wasn't until we got to the lights as we came out of the doctors that day where Auntie Nancy turned to me and said, she's blind. And it wasn't until she said those words, I think <laughs> she's blind, that it was like a dagger went through my heart. I was like, what do you mean? You know, I couldn't believe it. And that was my first realisation that actually there was something quite seriously Mm. different. And, oh my gosh, how was I going to handle this? Back to the house, Richard's mum came out and said, you know, and, and, what's happened? And Auntie Nancy shook her head. And then, of course, she went inside and she rang Uncle Terry, who Richard had gone off to, to work with that day. She said, oh, you need to tell Richard to come home as soon as possible. So Richard came flying home thinking his dad had died because, of course, we, the reason we'd flown back when we did was because 
his dad was terminally ill and he came flying through the door and said, oh my gosh, what's happened? Uh, his mum sent him through to the dining room where I was sitting with Natalie in my arms and I was crying and he said, what is going on? What's happened? He said, they, they think she's blind. I don't think Natalie can see. And he was like, what? And then he just burst into tears and where do we go from here? It's like, I've got no idea. So then the following day, we went to the ophthalmologist. The ophthalmologist said, so the information going back to the brain is not getting there quick enough for her to take a photo of what she's looking at. So at that stage, she was 10 weeks old, and we were told that she had optic nerve hyperplasia. Basically, that we had to hope she would have an educational site. And I said to them, what, is, what does that mean? And they said, well, um, hopefully she'll be able to read print one day, but she will never drive a car. Um, she is severely visually impaired. Yeah. And we went, well, okay, no referral, no bedside manner, no <laughs> nothing. It was just a diagnosis and we were told come back in 18 months' time. And there was and no guidance in then where to go from there? No, mm -hmm. no referral, no nothing. In a new country with tough family situation. Yeah. And then you got into this new, instead of Hawaii, yeah. into Alaska. We had to go down a whole other pathway that we just never imagined we would have to go down, so... How do you deal with this? What do you do? Who do you go to? You know, is there any help out there? The following Friday, my mother-in-law said to me, look, you guys need to get out. You know, just go out. You need some time out just to yourselves. Because, of course, I'd spent my whole week in tears. A thousand questions just kept going through my mind. What is her life going to be like? How are we going to handle this? Panic stri stricken at times. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just had so many questions, so many unanswered questions. Anyway, we went out on that Friday night to the pub, as you do, and <laughs> um, started playing pool up at the local bar, um, literally just up the top of the road. And um, one of Richard's cousins said, oh, my gosh, I haven't seen that guy for ages. So she went over and started talking to him. And he mm. was from a place miles away from where we actually were living. Mm -hmm. She hadn't seen him since they had lived together as children growing up. Yeah. Years ago, like, you know, 25, 30 years beforehand. Um, but she recognized him. He recognized her. They started chatting. And she said, so how are you? You want, you know, and he said, oh, I'm really good. But, you know, I've married. Um, a lady called Naomi and uh, we have a little boy um, but unfortunately he is blind and she went no way and <laughs> she said oh my gosh you have to meet my cousin so then she introduced us and you wouldn't believe it but he had exactly the same condition as Natalie wow um, had been diagnosed two years beforehand um, and they were two years ahead of us and um wow isn't we were like well, that, that is such, such amazing it was just amazing a, yeah and wow. having not been referred to anybody or not have a clue where we were going five days after her diag or four days after her diagnosis she was diagnosed on the tuesday and on the friday night we met a, a man a father of a child with the same condition as Natalie. Um, and we were told it was a one in a million chance. It was a one in a million. And then four mm. days later, we already know of one other. And then I was, you know, of course, we had lots of tears and he, he shed lots of tears. And he said, look, you need to meet my wife. Um, come round on Sunday. So we literally went round there on the Sunday morning. <laughs> he introduced this angel to me and she was my angel. She became my angel and she showed us and guided us and showed us a way of of how to raise a visually impaired child i guess that released a lot of hope or at least it's like okay yeah. now i have someone yeah. to hold on to or who can guide yeah. guide me in this new world mm. he said look you've just got to step out of this you can't keep crying he said she's known you for 10 weeks of her life as a happy mum, and all she's had from you the last 10 weeks is a, a mum in tears and you know you, you can't do this anymore you have to snap out of it I just said I can't and, she, and he said yes you can and you have to you don't have a choice hmm. and that was the end of my grieving process because well it wasn't uh, carried on for a long time but he was right and I thought no you're right I have to snap out of this so yeah yeah I've, I've heard parents describe it happen. as a process of like grieving mm. normalcy like what yeah. you expect it so it's yeah. not I think also for the people listening and watching, it's not mm -hmm. that you're not happy with 
Natalie. Oh, it's not no, that you're not yeah. happy with your baby. <laughs> I her. No. It's it's this. <laughs> I don't mm. know what's ahead. Yeah. What I thought mm. was ahead apparently yeah. is not ahead. Yeah. Um, and, and then you, you do, kind you, of yeah. have to deal with that's, that. That's right. And you go through a, you know, I went through an absolute devastation. Oh my gosh, what is life going to be like for her? Um, you know, why me? I went through a why me? Why why has this happened to me? I did everything right when I was pregnant. I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't take drugs. I looked after myself, like, you know, I made mm-hmm. sure I got good sleep. Um, you know, I didn't eat the cheeses and all the things that they tell you to stay away <laughs> from. Like I did everything right when I was pregnant. So why me? This is not okay. This is not fair. And then I was like, what do you mean? Why you? You're just being selfish. What about her? Why her? She doesn't deserve this. Like this is, you know, this is just not okay for my baby. Like this is not okay. Why, why her? And then I questioned God and I questioned, you know, if there is a God, because, you know, if there is, Mm. why is he doing this to me? Why is he doing this to her? And then you go through an angry period where you see other people on the street pregnant and they're smoking and you think you're handling it and then something else happens and you go back to square one again and and all these emotions come rushing back and that's okay you know like what I'm learning is that everything Mm. you know in our processes like whether you know this is in life I just want to say Mm. this to the people who are going through this everything you are going through is so valid and it is so okay Mm. to feel and process those feelings but know that in actuality, it does get better and you learn and you grow and you, and you adapt. Mm. And eventually you don't even mm. know what's coming. You know, you don't even realize like in the good things, you know, you, you think of all the worst case scenarios, but in actuality, mm. like there's so many good things that come out of it. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I say, I would never, honestly, I would never in a million years, 25 years ago, thought that Natalie would ever be living in America right now <laughs> without me. Like I just never, never in a million years did I think that would happen I never thought she'd ever leave home I never thought she would ever leave my side I never thought that when she would be able to go through mainstream schooling which she did she went through normal kindergarten normal primary school normal intermediate normal high school she moved around from one classroom to the next like the other kids did she rode and learned how to ride a a bike rollerbladed there was nothing that stopped Natalie I just wanted to give everything a go trampoline and and she used to do flips and jumps and oh my gosh she's getting out of (laughs) tape half the time but she learned how to do it you know and I was told when she was fit she probably will never walk until she's about two and a half years because she's got no visual motivation I mean motivation to go to something that she sees so you know she's going to be developmentally delayed and this that and the other and I was like no she won't you know like <laughs> I'm determined she's not on my watch and the other so milestone she reached all of them and she reached them within a pretty good framework I was determined she was going to walk down the aisle with me when I got married to her dad and um she did Wow. She was my flower girl and she walked down the aisle with my best friend who was my bridesmaid and my matron of honor. <laughs> and she was 14 months old and we were told she would walk at two and a half. So, yeah, no, Natalie has proven us wrong, <laughs> me wrong, time mm. after time after time again. I got told by a particular lady, then Natalie was probably about four or five months old. And then I was introduced to a lady called Margaret and she was completely blind and her husband was also completely blind. And she was sitting opposite me at an ophthalmology appointment with her baby in her arms. And I was like, oh my gosh, this blind lady has got a sighted child. Mm. How? Mm. You know, all these things go through your head. And then I just got chatting to her then. I said, look, I'm, you know, my name's Melanie. Um, you know, I'm sorry to, you know, interrupt you with what you're doing but I've just got a thousand questions I want to ask you she goes <laughs> fire away what do you want to know and <laughs> um and we got chatting and she was just incredible and she made me realize how how unscary it actually could be if mm. I changed my mindset and I changed mm. the way I was thinking and instead well, in of the mindset. negatively <laughs> think positively open-minded and go you know what if you think she can't she won't if you think she can she will and she said I wish my parents had been told this when I was a little girl Mm. because I wanted to put posters up on my wall of my favorite you know celebrities (laughs) celebrities when I was Mm -hmm. a teenager um 
and my parents were like, why would you want to do that? You can't even see them. She's like, because I want to, I want to fit in. I want, you know, my friends when they come over to see that I'm like them, I want to be as normal as possible. I want, you know, mm-hmm. you know what she said to me? She said the hardest thing I found, honestly, mm-hmm. since having a baby. And I said, what? And she said, is remembering to turn the lights on for him because I forget that he can see <laughs> and we can't. I was like, oh my gosh. And she said, and then, because of course, when we put the lights on for him, we then have to remember to turn them off at night because otherwise our house is lit up like a Christmas tree at night time <laughs> and we're all in bed asleep. And I was like, wow, how incredible is that? Um, so, yeah, because I couldn't see the lights on or off. Um, that was the hardest thing to remember. And then remembering whether or not she turned them on or whether she turned them off and, <laughs> you know, were they on, were they not? Um, mm-hmm. Because if you walked into one room, you know, from one end and you flicked it down and then you went out to the other end and flicked it off, then you didn't know whether it was on or off, you know? Cause yeah, no, especially if you have multiple so, switches. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So she said we always had to remember to use just the one switch so that we knew whether it was on or off. And she said it. And I said, well, how do you clean? And she said, like, how do you clean your house? How do you live independently? She said, we just take our shoes off so we can feel whatever's on the ground, on the carpet. Or on the floor. So when I vacuum, I can feel what's <laughs> under my feet. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow, that's incredible. And what about cooking? She said, well, yes, I've burnt myself a few times, but I've learned how to do it. She said, boiling an egg was interesting because she said boiled water was something that I, you know, really was scared of, boiling water and mm-hmm. things on a stove. But she said, there's other ways around it. She said, the microwave talks to me and the scales talk to me. And, you know, I've got measuring cups and things that you know I've had brailed and it was just incredible mm-hmm. so she just taught me so much and she just alleviated so many of my fears for Natalie as an independent person growing up and also for me being able to teach her things that you know I said to her well, what about getting dressed like how do you know what goes with what and she said well I got taught when I was younger that um, and it was through Hall my school for the blind because she went and lived there a couple of years which Natalie did too when she mm-hmm. left school um and went mm-hmm. flashing with other visually impaired children her own age uh, teenagers that you know you cut your label in half and then you know on a back of piece of clothing and and if you've cut it in half then maybe it's black you know <laughs> if you cut it sideways maybe it's white um if you cut it in a quarter or you would you know put it in a a diagonal shape you know it was blue Mm. if you cut it off completely different it was red you know like it was just like they had ways of matching socks and um (laughs) yeah it's possible just learning there's ways to do everything but it's just Mm -hmm. a matter of being innovative and forward thinking and then remembering (laughs) What goes what? <laughs> you know, they they yeah. have to have a memory like an elephant, which Natalie has. You know, she gets told one thing and she remembers it forever. So wow, she's, yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. so beautiful. So Natalie, mm-hmm. talking about like those practical things, what mm-hmm. are some things that, um, for example, maybe stood out to your housemates? Um, I mean, you have now lived with them for a um, couple of months. Mm -hmm. that they have learned about you that that maybe they mentioned like oh wow I never knew that you would do it that way or I never even thought about it yeah one of the things Mm -hmm. I really want to do is do a video of someone coming into a room and me being like oh hi and I'm sitting there doing the dishes in the dark and they freak out because they didn't expect me to be in there there's been moments where (laughs) um you know like I'll say it happened with my mom and she knew I couldn't see (laughs) but she's like I was like mom where are my shoes and she goes Natalie they're over there I'm like what and she's like there and she's pointing and I'm like <laughs> mom and like this stuff <laughs> like five times of asking I'm like mom I can't see what are you saying and she's like oh yeah <laughs> I just yeah I forget I forget she yeah. can't see. you know one of the funniest things funniest things is when people go to the bathroom and they assume so no one's in there uh-huh. because the light's not on so when you're living with her like because the light's not on you just walk in and then yeah. she goes oh, excuse me and you freak out because like a you weren't expecting her to be in there and b when you do go in it's dark all of a sudden you hear a voice and you think oh my god oh, really? like and she's like well I'm sorry I don't need the light on like you know like, like, of course you don't. Hey, I'm an eco-friendly citizen. I'm saving power. Oh, I know. And then, you know, when she was a little girl, I used to go in and say, oh. right, like, you know, lights out now to both of her, her and her sister, because, you know, they used to love reading. 
and mm-hmm. um, you know, listening to podcasts or whatever they could, you know, story to audible yeah. books or whatever the case may yeah. be. <laughs> they still love reading, or Carla would read to Natalie or whatever, and or Natalie mm-hmm. would read to Carla. And um, you know, I'd go, okay, <laughs> girls, lights out, and then I'd hear this hee 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 like later on, you know. <laughs> Okay, little monkey's still in there. I said, what are you doing? And Natalie's got the Braille book <laughs> under her covers. Still yeah, reading. reading my fingers. It's <laughs> like lights out. To Carla. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so Natalie, you, you learn to read with your fingers, right? Yes. So while, um, so yes, I did go to a main, uh, mainstream school, but I had a teacher aide in the class with me who taught me, or like, a, you know, a, itinerant, a resource teacher of vision who would teach me how to read braille while everyone else was learning print Mm. so um (laughs) it was definitely an adventure and I had at the time I had this huge great braille machine that was like a typewriter but it was like this big metal thing and um you know all this this, so there's in braille there's like six dots of actual braille the cell the um the little dots that make up the cells and then it would go like you know the different combinations of dots would make up the cells so I had to learn instead of how to form letters on a page, I had to learn how to punch in the right numbers, like all the right symbols and combinations to make the letters. And at the time, yeah, there was this, it was this big, huge, like they called it Perkins Braille. I I called it affectionately as I got older, my dinosaur, because it was, (laughs) it was heavy. It was metal. It was very loud. It, It embossed the words on the page. My books were like, some of them could be like up to three to five to 10 volumes of Braille like mm. textbooks textbooks would be like 40 something volumes of braille because they were like all these different details and she loved um, harry potter which were the worst ones because every harry <laughs> potter book was like 12 volumes or something <laughs> braille Masses of Africa. yeah and then and then when she wanted to learn how to read the bible it, it was like oh my gosh it's like 150 <laughs> volumes i like, had i when i took wow. I had, right, I had like, masses. and that was really funny because like I had, you know, like a whole shelf of some of them, they would have two or three books in one volume and then some would have, um, you know, one or even two volumes, a book. So, and, and it was double sided volumes. Paper. It's like this, you know, it's like an inch thick in like the pages, you yeah. know, uh, like A4 or twice it's the a size little, of an it's A4. A, it's, it's, it's like a massive, little bigger yeah, than A4. Huge. A little bit wider, but n- not as tall. It's mm. like more of a square page. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, and they ordered it over fr- from America, bless them, my youth group. They ordered it over from America. And it was like all old English, old King James, because that was the only one that was available at that point. And I was like, I was only just starting to learn. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. But I, it was, it was, well, so it was, but I also couldn't, you know, they'd say, they'd say, you know, turn to this book and then turn to this book back in the Old Testament. And I'm like, ah, which volume is that? <laughs> it's like, I don't have the all, like, all for the sake, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what a, a lot of people don't realize too, is there was no universal Braille code back then. So Braille oh. was, you know, there was a different, I mean, you've got your standard yeah. alphabet it's, standard numbers but then there was a whole heap of contractions in braille that shorthand and, so mm. yeah so the and UK it's like, and New Zealand I think was the same and America and Australia were the same so from going from New Zealand to Australia you would think it would have the same braille code but no it wasn't the <laughs> same so and it's, it's kind of like, like how you've got it's kind of like how you've got ASL like American Sign Language um, mm-hmm. you know New Zealand sign language Australian sign language like there are all the different languages and codes mm. and so yeah it was like that it's like learning a whole new language it's because you can't make braille small smaller you know? or bigger like you can't make the print smaller because braille is braille it's the size that it is to be able yeah, to there's no it. different font sizes so <laughs> you can't do yeah you can't change the font size and you know how small in the bible the font size is so you can yeah. imagine how many <laughs> volumes of braille there are for you to get just one so funny you know but living with Natalie going back to that like yeah how many times Natalie seriously <laughs> has, has she been you know she's bumped into something and she's gone oh, oh sorry you know and it could be like living <laughs> with her or it could be that she's at school and she's walking down the hallway or she's just gone into a room or another classroom or could be in a shop or something and she go oh sorry you know she bumped into something thinking it was a person and Natalie was a pop blonde <laughs> 
<laughs> like she's saying sorry to the pot plant or she's saying sorry to you know a statue of something or yeah I've actually written a song about the things I bump into on a on a daily basis yeah. often so yeah. it's it's a time yeah. it's hilarious so yeah there's a lot of adaptions that have to be made but my housemates not knowing like you know in it this this whole being a new thing like you know, it's even down to like, you know, that they'll we'll make a cleaning schedule and I'll be on dishes because like I I can clean, but I'm not as great as others could be and like do as much of a thorough job. So I'm like, okay, I'm the dishwasher and um, you know, I'll 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 wipe some things down when I can and be everything. So it's just about like adapting, but you know, it also comes with a lot of um, you know, when I'm at home, I don't have it all here, but when I'm at home, I have talking calculator talking scales like talking baking scales like I have a um you know the microwave has little stickers on it to tell me what um certain buttons are and you know I have a little I have a little pin like they call it a pin friend and you tap you each thing has a unique code on it and you record on this device what it is like canned spaghetti and then you stick the sticker onto the Mm. can yeah, and with a unique barcode, it reads it out again. Like when you stick it to the when you put the pin to it and stuff. Mm-hmm. So there's all this stuff in adapt adaptive technology that actually can work. So it's just about having a look, having a research, and finding the the technology that that is out there. A lot of it is just choosing to have a laugh, choosing to have fun with it, choosing to make you know sometimes I've, I've learned to make the blind jokes and have a laugh at myself because it's a way to break the ice and it's a way to mm. say hey no like I'm not this helpless little girl I'm actually I can do everything that you guys are doing it's just gonna take me a little a little different way mm-hmm. so yeah yeah I was actually impressed when was it two weeks ago <laughs> that we met and yeah. that you sharing how you did your own makeup I'm like what? Yeah. How, how in the world she's like, oh yeah I do that without a mirror my housemate taught me and I can actually do it now <laughs> so in the dark uh, yep in the dark everyone else is asleep and I'm just doing my makeup and you can do your makeup I'm like wow that's that's some <laughs> impressive skill I learned like, it in lockdown <laughs> yeah <laughs> quarantine activities <laughs> there's probably a lot of things that you can actually find that different way for it just takes a little mm-hmm. creativity to come up with different ideas creativity ingenuity and just like you know patience blindness requires a lot of patience (laughs) Mm. doing you know schoolwork you know like you know there's all these different things that we actually have to think about so technology has been her best friend really oh yeah she's born born into an era that yeah really if she'd have been born 20 years beforehand she just wouldn't <laughs> have had what she's been able to get you know like it's been so, amazing mm. talking mm. about the technology what is some of the technology or new things new solutions that you use on a daily basis so I have a little computer um right here which is called a braille note and it's mm-hmm. actually partnered with Android now. This this updated updated version is partnered with Google. And it's a little tablet. I don't know if you can see yep. this. Yes, we can. Um, and then you can also basically down here, the dots move as I scroll across. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you can see it doing that. Oh, yeah. I'll... I see some slight changes, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So as I do that, and then also, I mean, I don't think I've got the setting on right now to show you what's on the screen, but you can flip it up and it goes into a screen. Okay. And you've got on here, I've got like all the different apps. I've got email, I've got internet, I've got Facebook, I've got Instagram and, and Messenger and YouTube and, you know, the, my Bible app and all the different things. Zoom, you know, I can go on Zoom on here. Um, you know, there's all these different things that I can go on here. And then also, you know, it can talk. If I turn speech on. the speech on. Accessibility volume set to 100%. Email, Gmail, Facebook, Google, Instagram internet chrome messenger i'm not sure if you can fully hear that yep, but it's basically yeah yeah it's like talking out all the things so if i write a, if i write a long email or a document i can click a certain command and it'll read it out to me again to make sure i haven't spelt anything wrong or mm-hmm. things like that so yeah so i use that my, my brown note has a lot of you know amazing features and then um i do have i have an iphone and every apple product now has um accessibility and it's built in with voiceover. A lot of computers would have like a screen reader so they'd have a software called JAWS or they'd have a software called NVDA Reader and all these different things which would actually read out what's on the screen. Mm-hmm. But voiceover is the Apple version of that. And it just, yeah, it reads out what's on the screen. It reads out 
you know, the emojis <laughs> it reads out, you know, the websites and things. There are certain things that it won't read, like it won't tell you. I mean, again, technology is evolving so much now that it's starting to tell me like brief, vague descriptions of what a photo is, you know, what's mm-hmm. on the photo and stuff. It's, yeah, so it's evolving a lot. And it's just, it's, it's really interesting to see the technology that's growing in that as well. Those are the two main things that I use right now yeah. to do life. <laughs> so when you write on that machine, um, you're mm-hmm. really, you, do you actually write in Braille and then does it translate or do you use um, yes. a QWERTY or, you know, like a, a keyboard that we would mm. use? So I, I do write in, bra- in Braille on this. Mm-hmm. I do have the option um, if I wanted to, to get like a Bluetooth keyboard that would you know would be a QWERTY and I could I could write on that but at the moment I've just got this um what I have now and if I did get like a laptop if I did get a Mac or a a PC that had JAWS Mm -hmm. or something like that I could write I could use the the screen reader and just use touch typing and things like that which I did learn I did learn how to touch type earlier in life just not earlier in life but like earlier in my kind of just after I left high school and things like that to make sure that I was if I did get a braille accessible computer I could use those and just things like that I learned a lot of skills that I could use um if I needed to yeah beautiful there's just so many different solutions you know now I can just take my phone with an audiobook and I don't need to carry around five different volumes of braille so it's it's definitely evolved a lot poor thing used to have so much carrying around eh? but now mm. it's like most of it's sort of on the computer so you can send Natalie an email these days and she can read it straight away mm. um, you can send her a word document and it will you know tell her what's in it will read out what's in it yeah so Natalie you have mm. always been in regular education or have you also been in school for the blind um, I was always fully mainstreamed through my schooling but then mm-hmm. when I left high school the year I left high school I did go to what was called at the time kickstart transition program and I learned how to cook and how to clean and how to live independently like that's where I learned a lot of the skills that I learned you know I learned to I learned a lot more about taking public tra- like I learned how to t- catch the train whereas before I'd had I so as a blind student you get orientation and mobility instruction from the mm-hmm. blind uh, foundation for the blind in New Zealand you know so I'd learned a little bit about like I'd, uh, all my life I'd learned like how to walk to school how to navigate between classes I'd go into school during the holidays and learn how to work between my different classes and the timetables and things especially during high school went and did a lot of that and in, in before term started so yeah I was learning you know I'd, I'd walk to school I, eventually I would walk to school by myself because um, we were only right up like around the corner from it and um that was mainly in high school and then I'd walk to school with with friends before that as well so we just we did a lot of like learning and adapting that way yeah so I learned I learned a lot of I learned a lot of those skills alongside and so when yeah when I left high school I did attend uh kickstart at the school for the blind yeah just so that I could train in those skills and you know go to blind foundation camps and things like that but yeah apart from that it was all fully mentioned what is that in your friendships how has that been how did they adapt to you were they able to facilitate you where you needed that easily yeah so I feel like there were definitely a mix there was definitely a mix of things people who were really great and who really took it on and were amazing and then you know it was very rare because I did get very good at making friendships but there Mm -hmm. were a couple who would like kind of take advantage of it a little bit and there were also a couple who would you know like it can sometimes be that a teacher would say hey can you hang out with like with that person it mm-hmm. was definitely a, a, a beautiful mix because I did make some really beautiful friends um in in school and so it's it's definitely a, yeah like I say a mix of things ultimately like it turned out really really well and I learned to walk tall I learned to be strong I learned to make jokes I learned to have a laugh <laughs> nah but it was it was it was fun and you know I definitely had some great friends so Melanie that like you mentioned earlier in the beginning how you had like all these questions like what is this gonna look like what is this gonna how is she ever gonna do sounds like Natalie did most of these things and actually succeeded mm, um, she did She did. I mean, you know, in terms of friendships and things like that, Natalie had to rely on other people to come to her, as Mm. she said, rather than her being able to go find them in the playground. So she had to rely on her peers 
to actually involve her and include her in things. Um, and nine times out of ten, they did. They were very, very good. You know, she may not see them all the time or hear from them all the time, but they'll never forget her. And if they ever do see her, they love to see her and they do catch up. And it's mm. like they've got so much history together. And, yeah, that she'll always be remembered. You know, Natalie was one of those people that, you know, everybody knew Natalie Depar. Everyone on the show <laughs> knows Natalie Depar because, and she wasn't known as, it wasn't just known as the blind girl. She was known as the kid that got up there and sang beautifully and she yep. was in the musicals, you know, she was involved in musical theatre and, yeah, shows, like so many different shows and singing contests <laughs> and talent yep. quests and you know mm. just lo local stuff all that, the things you know she was all, <laughs> if anything she could get involved in she would there's so many more to your character there's yeah, so much absolutely. more that people yeah. get to know when they actually yeah. mm. invest a little bit more time to listen to see yeah. you and I've heard you sing yes I know it's a beautiful voice like you have <laughs> great 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 voice Thank you. I think that's also a beautiful thing to realize like sometimes we we see someone with a disability and then they there's something that happens in our minds, box that person in to like, oh, then mm -hmm. this is who you are and identify mm -hmm. them as the blind, as the person with, you name it. You know, I, I'm able to do different things that I never thought I could. And it's, it's actually, it's something that I really want to be able to impart and release to others because it, it is, it is possible. It is, we are more than just what people would say we are, you know, like a lot of people would say, oh, she's blind so she won't be able to do this so she she won't be able to do this and that and the next thing but actually if we just had the chance to yeah. we would yeah I exactly. like that where um what you said earlier how you had to shift your mind or uh, Melanie where you shifted your mind mm -hmm. to the mindset from she will never do all these things to oh but she will and mm -hmm. just partner mm -hmm. with that and partner with mm -hmm. the thought like, oh yeah, she will, mm -hmm. you will go to America or you will be able to mm -hmm. do all these things. And, and here you are doing all these things. So right mm -hmm. now we're in the same school right now and you are the first blind student. Yes. What are some of the beautiful things that you have had to navigate? Maybe beautiful and maybe some less beautiful things <laughs> um, as it's completely new to this environment too. Thankfully, a lot of the stuff is actually done online. So I can just log onto the website in our first year, um, they had a binder of a, like a binder mm -hmm. file of all the uh, handouts and worksheets and homework and things like that, that weren't a part of the online system. And, you know, so the students would take a photo of their page and then upload that to the file. Whereas a lot of those things I couldn't actually do, like some of the assignments, I couldn't actually do that. So I would have to get help from roommates or I'd have to sit with friends and do it or and I did um, talk to them about that and you know they're working on that and they reimbursed me for my books so that I could buy my books um, on Audible or Kindle or Amazon or things like that so that yep. I could actually read them and listen to them and then you know for example in first year I mean this year it's been a lot of like online offline online offline so I've just been with my roommates but last year when we we're in the um, in person in the building I ended up, you know, partway through the year, I ended up getting a special seat up the front row, you know, so that I could wow. go and sit there and, yeah, yeah, so I could go and sit there and be close to the action and hear everything well and be, you know, close if, if anything needed to happen. So it was just like, it's all about advocating. It's all about mm. realizing that actually you are worth those things. A lot of my life has been like, no, I don't want to like inconvenience people. I don't want to like be a burden on people. I don't want to this, that, and the next thing, but actually, no, I just, I deserve to have the amount and the caliber of education that other people do and mm -hmm. um, allowing myself to email a teacher and be like, hey, could I get this accommodation? Could I get this brailled or could I get reimbursed for this, you know, for these books or whatever, you know, like yeah. it's actually, and and like, I want to say to anyone in listening who's going through these things, like don't ever be afraid to, to make those like emails to write and to advocate because it's actually so powerful what we can create. Mm -hmm. Um, and what we can do because of those things so and a lot exactly. of people you know like a lot of people say oh it's ignorance but you know if you don't know you never do you know like if yeah. you've never been in that situation before it's not yes it's ignorant how are you but supposed not a, to know not in a negative way it's, a, it's yeah. like you know you're ignorant because you've never had to deal with it before like when I said to her okay um I want a brow machine because I want to teach Natalie brow they're like well she won't get one until she turns five and goes to school and I said but 
every other child starts to doodle at around 12 months, 13 months, 14 months when they can pick up a pencil and start making marks on paper. So I want that for my child. And they're like, but why would you want to learn Braille? I'm like, well, who else is going to write letters from Santa or the Tooth Fairy or label his presents <laughs> under the Christmas tree or yeah. write her birthday cards and or put little notes in her lunchbox when she, you know, to find them in the playground yep. you know when she goes to mm. eat and lunch and they're like oh my gosh and no one else had ever asked to do it never assuming that a blind person or a visually impaired person needs help when they assume they do because sometimes they can be more of a hindrance than a help if people jump in like mm. for example if natalie's in the middle of doing something she's better off sometimes doing it in her own way in her own time and at her own pace for example move them from a to b safely the mm. blind person themselves for example may know exactly how to get from A to B, but the minute that a sighted person comes and makes them do a detour and then leaves them in a position, all of a sudden that person's lost their orientation and they might be, they don't understand now where they've been taken to. So sometimes letting that person do what they need to do themselves safely is how it should be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, often taking Natalie into a cafe or restaurant or something and people would assume again that because she wasn't looking at them that she couldn't speak. You know, I would go in for a cafe and we'd be standing there and Natalie would be standing there next to me with her cane and they'd say to me, oh, you know, hello, how can I help you? And I'd say, oh, can I please have a mochaccino and an apple cinnamon muffin, for example. <laughs> yeah. And then they'd say, okay, and what would she like? It's like, mm, ask her. <laughs> you know yeah. like but because she couldn't make that contact that eye contact they would assume that then I would be her spokesperson then what would you like mm -hmm. um to the person that is not looking at you never assuming that they can't speak for themselves or can't do things for themselves I think it's really really crucial um Natalie is a lot more capable than a lot of people give her credit for and I think sometimes we should never assume that she needs help crossing the road and never assume that she needs help finding something on the ground or that she's dropped. Do you need some help? And if Natalie turns around and says, no, no, I'm fine, then thank you. Or I think I'm okay. Um, just let me have a look. If you don't mind just waiting for a couple of seconds. And then if she can't find what she's dropped, then actually, mm -hmm. sorry, yes, could you help yeah. me? Yeah, Natalie, how's that for, how's that for yeah, you? Yeah, that's so true. I think there has definitely been a lot of examples of that. But also, you know, it is a spectrum. Something mm -hmm. that I really wanted mm -hmm. to say as well is that every disability, every, um, you mm -hmm. know, person with, with special needs in whatever way they do is a spectrum. It's not one person, one blind person is going to be the exact same as another blind person. Mm -hmm. It's not we're very different each of us have our things that we need the things that we don't need each of us has things that we would prefer to have and some of us want help some mm -hmm. of us don't it's about learning to be um, aware of the person and you know blindness in itself not only personality wise like every blind person as everybody is in general like all people have different personality type whether you've got a disability or not and so not only with personality but also with our conditions they're all so different some have peripheral vision some have tunnel vision some can mm -hmm. see only complete blackness where for me I can see light and dark so I understand mm -hmm. shapes and shadows and outlines of things but I can't see color or detail or movement there's different things that each of us can see that actually can help mm. us navigate the world in a way that people mm. wouldn't necessarily expect I totally agree asking is key I really now I've learned you know back in the day I was like oh I hate it when people like assume and I've learned now that it's because they mean well and it just means now that I'm learning how to say yes I'd always say like I'll ask for help when I need it which is true but it is very like it's awesome to get that offer for help but again like mum said not just assuming and doing it for us when mm. actually we have yep. a system and then there's you know things moved to a totally different place that we don't know where things are now or mm. but it, you know that that also doesn't mean to say I'm incapable of doing it if something's been moved like I can I can scan I can find where that thing's been moved to we may take a little bit longer than everybody else but it doesn't mean we're not able to and not yeah. capable mm. to do it we I just I but I do really appreciate and I think that's why I want to make the content that I want to make like you know like I said I want to start doing TikTok and, and YouTube and podcasts myself and talking about different things like this and answering people's questions I actually just want to put that out there like I'm so open to answer any questions people have and if people are going through these things and they're like I still have so many questions and you know not all of it can fit into a podcast or whatever it may be like yeah I'm so open to answering those questions to having those discussions even the hard questions mm. even the questions like that you wouldn't necessarily want to ask people because actually like as someone who has gone through it I want 
to bring education I want to allow people to know the beauty in it and actually yeah. learning and knowing because like mom said you know we had no referrals or anything like that so now that we have people like now that we know ourselves we get to be those referrals for others so yes yeah. yeah, no, and, I'm, so and I'm, open, I'm open to the same thing you know the first time mum you it's trial and error all the time anyway you know, <laughs> yeah. you know what's right and, what's not. <laughs> and to this day you know to this day I still don't know if I've done everything that I could have I mean there's things that I could have done differently things that I you know if I could look back at there yeah. might have been things that I've done differently but you can't look back in hindsight and think oh I wish I'd done this I wish I'd done that we mm. did the best that we could with the resources that we had the time that we were given mm-hmm. as a result result we are who we are today and Natalie is who she is today as a result of that but um Mm -hmm. I think one more last thing if anyone wants to help Natalie at school more than anything um you know when you're in a room or in a classroom or you know and you see Natalie coming maybe pushing in a chair um or you know it goes <laughs> underneath the table so it's not just stuck out in the middle of the room or you know like <laughs> the amount my, of bruises. my other children <laughs> yeah my other yeah. kids you know like um Natalie's siblings you know they got so used to when they put something down they always <laughs> had to make sure that they put it in a way put it down where Natalie wasn't then going to trip over it so yeah you know and then her friends their friends and Natalie's friends used to if they scooted around to our place you know instead of leaving their scooter or their bike at the bottom of the driveway or at the bottom of the ramp, you know, they would put it to the side so that if Natalie went running down the ramp as she did without her cane, and you know, because <laughs> that's what she was like. As I say, um, I'm an adventurous she person. Go, <laughs> she didn't go tripping over it at the other end, you know, like yeah. so. Um, yeah, just it's just, just things being, to be aware of. Yeah, just being, you know, not parking your car on across a footpath and things like that, where when there's a blind person trying to get from A to B. Um, you know, that's hard for someone, you know, rubbish day, but <laughs> rubbish bin day was so hard for Natalie getting to and from school because she used to have to, you know, maneuver around all these rubbish bins and park, cars parked across driveways and then so branches funny. hanging down, you know, like yeah. if mm-hmm. the council didn't cut the branches down, then, you know, one day she'd walk to school fine then next day a branch and the wind had come down and you know she'd be walking along and then bang she'd hit into her you know it was just little things like that that, (laughs) yeah you know we just we just take it for granted 80 percent of what you learn is through your vision and Natalie's had to make that up in so many different ways um Mm -hmm. but but we're learning making friends with someone like Natalie who you can you know, learn how to see the world from a different perspective. I tell you, it's mm-hmm. completely eye-opening. You will appreciate what God has created for us um, in so many different ways when you <laughs> sit and you describe a tree to the person that can't see beside you. Mm. Um, because or a beautiful every tree view is or different. a sunset. Or... Yeah, every tree yeah. is different. And I didn't want Natalie thinking that, growing up thinking that trees were green, grass was green, sky was blue and the ocean was blue because it's not. Um, there were so many different shades there's so many different ways that it looks um, and so for months and months and months well, all her life you know mm-hmm. describing mm-hmm. you know I've just described things to her um, and every day it looked different um, that same flower or tree looked different you know 10 times throughout different the year. seasons that, you know? it would just look different um, and I would describe that to her you know sitting down and watching a movie alongside her when there was a lot of silences you know so when mm-hmm. you know, and back then we didn't have audio, audio descriptions <laughs> yeah so describing what's happening in a movie scene or you know um so that she can be involved in it it's mm-hmm. yeah there's, there's so much there's so many different things and that's yeah. and that's the that's the beautiful thing is that like I still want to be a part of that and I think that's that's what I've learned about all of that like many 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 of us in the community whether it's blindness whether it's other um you know whether it's people in a wheelchair whether it's people who are deaf whether it's people you know with Mm. different um different needs um we we all still want to be approached we still want to Mm. be made friends with we still want to have fun with people Mm. like we're Mm -hmm. just we're human you know we're still people and like Mm. you know a lot of people are like a lot of people could be intimidated to come up and say hi because they didn't want to offend or they didn't really know how to approach it for me I choose positivity. I choose joy. I choose humor. I choose having fun, breaking boundaries. I'm not the sheltered little blind girl wrapped up in cotton wool, as we said earlier. I'm, I'm out there. I'm having fun. I'm, you know, singing on stages. I'm, you know, busking in the street. I'm, 
I'm more than I ever thought I was. You know, like yeah. I, I always said to my mom, I will be the like probably the last of our siblings to leave home. I'll be the last to, you know, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. You know, I'm, I'm just doing my thing. Um, and now I'm here studying in America, doing my thing and, and living my dreams. And so like, and not possible. talking about coming back anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very Beautiful. adventurous and very out there. And I, 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 I want people to know that that is possible. And even if you are one of those people right now and you're going through different learning needs or different disabilities, or if you're a young vision impaired person or whatever it may be, there are so many of us out there now who are starting to produce mm. content. There are so many of us out there who are really starting to raise our voices yeah. and be like, no, this is possible. So able and capable to do everything you dream everything you want to do in life it's if I can do it you can do it <laughs> and that's I think a great place to kind of start wrapping this up because we've mm -hmm. been talking and I think we could continue for hours <laughs> we like could. so many stories so many stories that, yeah that you could mm -hmm. share um insights in how we can help I think it's really important what I've heard you guys say is mm. to not assume but to be bold mm -hmm. and ask. So it's okay mm -hmm. to ask, do you need help? But then yeah. wait for the answer and not just, mm -hmm. you know, give the help mm -hmm. right away. Something also very important to talk to you directly. There's no need to talk to anyone who's assisting you. You are very capable to give your own mm -hmm. answer, which I think also is a very good key. Then just view you as a person that they want yeah. to get to know and see what hobbies you have, what interests you have what dislikes you have mm -hmm. and then from there start building a friendship and mm. getting to know this beautiful human being that exactly. has a disability but is not defined or defined by their disability mm -hmm. and that's the fun thing is that actually for me there's no judgment here like even down to like things about like prejudice and things like that about mm, you know people's mm -hmm. discrimination like mm -hmm. you know with race or ethnicity like mm -hmm. I know I know and I acknowledge people's heritage and their culture and I I love I love those different aspects of people and I love the diversity that yeah you know this world can bring but for me like I I just I see people and I just think wow that's an amazing friend or wow that's a mm -hmm. that's a beautiful story or I just I love connecting with people and I'm mm -hmm. I'm really excited to to dive in and don't be afraid mm -hmm. And yeah. there's no judgment. It's when you do have a conversation, if you do make that move to go and speak to, for example, Natalie, if she's in a crowded room and she's standing by herself and you want to approach, don't be afraid. Go, go up mm -hmm. and say, hi, you know, hi, my name is whatever. How are you? And mm. make sure that they, and if, and if they don't respond, if Natalie doesn't respond, she may not think that you're talking to her because she can't see your eye, you know? So, so, eye contact. So, so please don't think, oh God, she didn't, you know, or she can't hear me or she, or I feel, or she's ignoring me. Just say, oh, you know, um, sorry, I didn't realize that. I don't know if you realized, but I was talking to you or something. And Natalie will go, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. And I'll then, have that, and and then have that conversation. And then that conversation mm. will be opened up and Natalie would love you for it. But then remember when you're leaving to make sure that you know that you're leaving. Yep. Because otherwise, Natalie will continue talking to you. And next minute, you know, she's talking <laughs> to nobody because they've, they've left. Yep. And, you know, poor Natalie's so been left in situations where that's happened so many times. Yep. And I've said to her, oh, darling, they've gone. Even, her, you know, even I do. <laughs> I've, I've done it. Her dad's <laughs> done it. Her siblings have done it. You know, like, well, hey, Natalie, how are you? Yep, good, thanks. And they've continued going yeah. as they've walked past her. Um, and then she'll go, oh, so what did you do today? And that person's gone because they didn't, you know what I mean? It's like, so she's tried to carry on the conversation. Yeah. Um, but that person's been, they've gone and they didn't even realize that Natalie's yeah. going to carry on a conversation. So yeah. obviously not having the visuals and the social yeah. cues. That's so funny. Um, yeah. So letting them know when you're there and it's say hi, you know, and even just touching the arm so that is aware someone's there. And then just like letting her know, oh, by the way, you know, sorry, I do have to go, but it was lovely meeting you or something like that yeah. and just making yeah. that departure. So yeah. knowing well, the presence <laughs> and then knowing the departure is quite helpful when you're talking to someone that can't see you. Yeah, and it's comforting. I must say yeah. it's comforting yeah. if your mm -hmm. sisters or your siblings and your parents sometimes oh, yeah. do, do this. <laughs> They'll forget. 
<laughs> so oh, we can walk in. Natalie, no, Natalie has so many times. Mom, where's my thing? Oh, over there. I still do it to this day. And now his siblings, I'll be walking with them and I'll go watch the step. They go, Mom, I can see. I'm like, oh, of course you can, you know? So I do the opposite with them as well, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Like just just knowing that there's no shame in it, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and also, and also not being afraid to use words like oh, do you want to come and watch this? Or do you want to come and see this? Or do you want to... Oh, have a look at this, because, you know? Yeah, because, <laughs> and because a lot of people will go, oh, do you want to come and watch a movie with me or come to the movie? And then they'll go, oh, no, she can't because she can't see. Well, yeah, she can. She can come and watch the movie and she can come and see something. And, and she will, you know, different. she just mm-hmm. sees it differently. She, mm-hmm. you know, she'll hear it or she'll, you know, she'll, she'll Ask feel you to it. Ask what's going you know? on. <laughs> yeah. So not, not being ashamed to use normal wording because, mm-hmm. you know, it's inclusiveness. It's about treating Natalie as an equal human being yep. with the same as anybody else. But the fact she can't see that's the only thing that's different. Well, she can't smell either, but, you know, <laughs> but she'll tell yeah. you, hey, do yep. you want to come and smell this? Or oh, actually I can't smell oh really you yeah. know and she'll go yeah yeah but that's okay you know just you know what does I appreciate it the like? thought <laughs> describe it to me you know like yeah. <laughs> so yeah it's fun. just it's not fun. not being afraid because a lot of people over the years even family members have gone and they've burst into tears because they've gone oh my god I've just said oh do you want to come <laughs> and see this or do you want to come and watch that and then they've realized that she can't and then they felt guilty and then they all these emotions have come in and they've started crying and I've gone it's okay it's okay she's you know <laughs> it's okay you know and they're like mm. no, but I said something I shouldn't have and yeah. it's okay and Natalie uses the words she'll say yeah can I come and have a look or can I come and see oh and I'll see go, you later really <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, or she'll, they'll be like, really? Come and see it? How is she going to see it? But she'll come. She'll come and see it. <laughs> yeah, so check it in out. a different way. I'll just hold mm. my hand out or I'll, you know, do it in a different yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Or hear That's... what's going on, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so good. So, so yeah. good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lovely thank you, thank you. you. The honesty in your openness about these topics and even I think the mm. encouragement to completely be okay with asking questions, using words, not mm-hmm. thinking, not overthinking. I think yeah. that's also to end on a so like, important, important yeah. one. Like, mm. Just no need to overthink. Just be yeah. yourself. And if maybe mm. it is at some <laughs> point a little awkward or you said mm-hmm. something that was really offensive, trust that the person will be you know, smart enough to actually yeah. tell you, hey, that was really mm. offensive. But okay, mm. let's move on and um, yeah. and continue from there. So thank mm. you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing You're your welcome. stories, for your heart. And um Natalie, I am really looking forward to getting to know you better and just have some yes. coffee here in town. Yes, so. that sounds great. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much appreciated. And thank you guys okay. for listening.